What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Most of you probably already know what you're getting into. Hell as old as time. Song as old as rhyme. White man apologizes for being racist. It's the classic rite of passage where Incel basically grows up in a basement and, you know, decides to be a hateful, spiteful person or whatever, yada, yada, yada. And then one day they touch grass or <laughs> they get a girlfriend. I don't know. Combination of many things that makes them rethink like, wow, maybe I shouldn't have been a piece of shit. For those of you guys who don't know what I'm talking about, um, iDubs, a pop popular YouTuber from back in the day who uh, used to make a lot of edgy videos uh, came out yesterday and made an apology video for, well, a lot of his old prior content. One of those videos being iDubbbz saying that it was okay to say the N-word with a hard E-R and uh, justifying why people like him should uh, be able to drop that word whenever they feel like it, as long as it's funny, you know, in context. So as you can imagine, a lot of my white mutual friends are kind of sitting here waiting to sip the tea, wondering what the blackie thinks about what a white guy said about about saying the n-word and <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. iDubbbz just dropped a video titled, I Miss the Old iDubbbz. It's a 17 minute video where he basically creates a content cop on himself, evaluating his old content and uh, as his new self, uh, basically suggesting that what he probably did was wrong. As you can see from the comment section, 98,000 likes versus 58,000 dislikes. A lot of mixed views and behaviors on here on the guy apologizing for, you know, basically bullying people when he was 26, 27. So let's look at the video, okay? I have no affiliation with iDubs whatsoever, so it's not like I'm going to take it easy on him or hard on him for whatever reason. Used to be an iDubs fan in the past, actually. Really enjoyed his content comps, but um, yeah. We'll take a look at the video. I'll be neutral, harsh, but fair. For a while, I felt like if I changed my content over time, that people would see that as a reflection of who I am and what I value. Uh, but I, I'm starting to realize that that is a very weak and passive way to, you know, run my channel and live my life. So I, I think it's, you know, if I'm going to have the balls to go to Tana's uh, fan meetup and say slurs at her and then make a video about how it's okay to say slurs, I, I think I should have the balls to make an apology video and take accountability for the mistakes I've made. So that's what this video is. For reference, if you have no idea, there's a famous clip out there where iDubbbz goes to like a Tana uh, Montague uh, meetup or something like that and goes and takes a picture with her and then kind of grabs her and says, say N-word with an ER. It's, um, <laughs> it's a cold classic. I've realized that I need to be crystal clear about what I believe so there's no room for ambiguity I am responsible for creating a lot of hurtful and damaging content on this channel. And I've also created a culture of uh, apathy and, I don't know, a lot of, like, cruelty as well. Like, you know, some of the videos I've made have been very not edgy. I don't think they, they you know, some of these videos were edgy. I think they were just outright cruel. So I don't want people to, you know, get it confused about you know, where I stand, I have made some cruel, hurtful content, and I need to acknowledge that, and I'm really sorry that it's taken me this long to acknowledge it. So if you guys don't know, iDubbbz has taken down a series of videos on his channel called Content Cop. Content Cop being types of videos where he goes around and he finds YouTubers like Leafy or Rice Gum or Keemstar. And uh, he basically roasts them and tells them why their channel is garbage. And then everyone agrees with it and they usually get canceled in some kind of way where they lose a mass amount of following. It's like when Eminem drops a diss track on you. You're either your career is ruined or you actually have to switch careers altogether. He said he wasn't being edgy, which is interesting because I feel like that's exactly what he was doing. Maybe you want to call it cruel now, but uh, to me, I guess back in the day when he was making videos talking about Leafy's chin or talking about Keemstar or Rice Gum, I thought they were hilarious. I thought he actually had valid points and criticism towards these channels and he was doing it in a comedic way. I, I wouldn't have uh, considered it cruel or unusual or harmful. I guess maybe that is a definition of edgy, but um, it just seemed like a place where everyone was kind of being toxic, uh, especially those guys already like Rice Gum and Leafy. So he was just delivering it right back. A cesspool of toxic 
some people just being toxic to each other. That's kind of all it really was. The content I'm talking about specifically are content cop videos and videos where I was uh, just generally criticizing people for very lackluster reasons and, uh, you know, obviously didn't have any accountability online whatsoever on my end. I was morally grandstanding and acting as if I am any better than any of these people that I was making content cop videos on, and I'm not. I'm a human, I'm a real human who makes mistakes, and you know, I make a different set of mistakes than the people I was making videos on, but it doesn't matter. I don't think anyone deserves that level of cruelty or hate. I don't know. Maybe this is unpopular opinion, but I think some people do deserve that level of cruelty and hate. He keeps using the word cruelty and hate. I just call it karma. <laughs> at that time, he was just the guy that would deliver it. Now he's saying like, maybe karma is coming back to bite him in the ass. Or now he's realizing that he was no different from the people he was serving karma to. Nine times out of 10, when this guy was making content cops on people like Leafy and stuff, <laughs> some of the times he was speaking fact. And even if he was being kind of harsh or rude or mean, a lot of the times he was right. It's also indoctrinated a lot of people into thinking that this is an okay way to behave and it's mm. not it's it's super irresponsible and shitty 2015 2016 youtube was a different time that was back in the day when everyone got really popular by bullying each other <laughs> canceling each other making diss tracks grade a under a keem starred i dubs leafy all of these guys coming up in here and just trying to destroy each other's channels and talking shit back in that day that's <laughs> that was the replacement of what you have now which is youtube boxing i am very insecure about my ability to create interesting content or like entertain. Hmm. Uh, it's gotten better over the years, but it's something that I have struggled with constantly. And it's one of the reasons why I, you know, kept making this hurtful content. You know, I, I ended up pivoting it into other things because I, you know, I felt bad about it like innately. Um, but it's still something that I struggle with and I don't want you to interpret that as an excuse, but I hope that that is relatable to other creators who maybe struggle with the same thing. Uh, I'm not confident in my ability to entertain and I think if I had to rely on my personality uh, to entertain people that I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have any amount of success and that is uh, really hard to come to terms with. TLDR iDubs has created a community where he has successfully grown by bullying other people. <laughs> and now that he has some regret and kind of does not want to bully anymore, doesn't want to be that guy, he's kind of worried that, uh, you know, being a non-bully, being a regular human being or a dude who has a change of heart on how he wants to make content uh, won't be enough for him to actually uh, succeed in this industry or to basically satisfy the, the viewer base that he created, which I understand, not specifically his situation but every creator has a point or a moment where sometimes they pivot as they start making content or they start doing something that's different from uh, what they used to do and they're kind of worried that hey that insecurity creeps up maybe what i'm doing here or maybe i'm switching to maybe i don't actually have a talent maybe the character that iDubs made was only that. And if he became anything else, uh, he wouldn't make it as a YouTuber or as an entertainer or as a content creator, which is, you know, yeah, that just makes sense too. Again, when you make millions of people follow you for being one person and then you decide to be another person, yeah, <laughs> you might find some backlash. Like at the Joker after like 10 years of bullying Batman and, and killing like all the Robins and doing completely terrible, horrible things was just like one day like, you know what, Batman, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't have did all of this to you. And I hope you and the rest of Gotham City can can actually, you know, forgive me and see me for uh, who I would like to be. And, and, <laughs> and like the rest of the villains in Gotham City are like, what in the hell? Joker, you supposed to be like the king of the bad guys here. Like now you over here trying to be a good guy? Like what? There's no way. I don't know, guys. You tell me. Do you think the Joker, who has done irreparable damage to many people's lives and the people around him and the community around him, do you believe that he is uh, deserving of grace and forgiveness? Hmm. <laughs> I was being very bigoted in a lot of my videos. Oh, and I justified it because, you know, I didn't think it was too serious. And I thought that people were going to see that I had good intentions, you know, but that's so silly you know casual racism is still racism casual bigotry is still bigotry 
and you know, I said a lot of things that uh, I, I look back at and I cringe now and I'm like, that is an awful thing to say. It, it doesn't matter what my intentions are. Like if I'm hurting people, I'm hurting people. And you know, who the fuck knows what my intentions are? Like I, sarcasm and like uh, jokiness and jokey tone only goes so far, especially over the internet. Even in real life, that's like an impossible thing to know with 100% certainty. Let's call it being a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> or an entertainer, right? Like if you're you're Dave Chappelle, right? Who tells racist jokes or bigoted jokes or whatever. And you basically suggest like, hey, hey, this is all just me trying to poke at people and uh, have fun and have laughs. Then yes, it's called comedy. I don't care if y'all judge me on this, but I'm one of the firm believers that uh, you can joke about almost any topic that is available out there. As long as you make it funny, uh, then you will be able to pass as comedy. That's just kind of how I look at it. Almost everything is touchable. And in comedy, you are going to hurt people. I think maybe what's happening here is that uh, iDubbbz never made it clear that he was just joking because I, I don't think past iDubbbz was ever joking. I think he would make jokes, but also it would blend in with actually how he sees the reality of life, which is, yeah, casual racism is okay. <laughs> casual bigotry is okay. You know, like it's okay to say these words. Like iDubbbz never made it clear what was a joke and what was not a joke. And being that ambiguous was part of like his character. And I'm guessing now since his character is now changed or I don't know, maybe the old iDubbbz character can no longer exist in this environment that is 2023 YouTube and creator clash in space. Maybe, you know, just like a lot of the old people who are now over on Rumble, they can't exist on this platform. Leafy can't exist on this platform going around bullying kids nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe iDubbbz reels like this is having a change of heart and just saying like, yo, I mean, if I want to continue moving forward, making content, uh, making uh, tournaments, getting sponsors, uh, I can't be that guy anymore. Or maybe he actually also has a change of heart where he's like, I don't want to be that guy anymore either. I don't know. He could be lying to me. He could be grifting. But so far, that's the message. I've just always had this dumb philosophy that I'm not responsible for you know my audience and uh, how they behave beyond what content I put out, mm. and uh, that's stupid. It, and it's it's led to a lot of hate and a lot of bad outcomes. And uh, I just want to make it clear that I am absolutely responsible for my audience. And uh, you know, I guess if you want to you know look out for people who are red flags, it's definitely people who had my mentality that say. Uh, I'm not responsible for what my audience does. iDubbbz fans in shambles. <laughs> Imagine being an iDubbbz fan and he says to you, hey, you're a red flag and I created you. I raised you and now I'm... I gotta put you down. It's interesting because I agree and disagree with them. There, there's an extent where your audience is going to do, you know, whatever the hell they're going to want to do. But also there is like, you know, I think energy in, energy out. Uh, if you're putting out a certain type of content into the sphere, you're going to gravitate and bring people of that same notion. A lot of those people probably maybe edgy teens who, who maybe aren't incels. Maybe they just like comedy. Maybe they just think his videos are funny. Maybe they like his intro, the boom, ba, the boom, boom, ba. You know, maybe they just kind of like the whole vibe. But then also maybe you do grab the actual hardcore incels who who hate black people and love to be bigotry and love to be hateful. And and yes, that is the energy that you are going to summon. And it's uh, kind of like the abyss. Uh, iDubbbz looked into the abyss that he created in his community. And then eventually the abyss, uh, well, it stared back. I know that this apology isn't enough. I, I've clearly done a lot of damage. You know, these videos have been up for a long time and, and have accumulated millions of views. I shouldn't be able to just make an apology video and walk away from it. This is something that I should live the rest of my life with, and I expect to. Uh, I've profited off of this bigoted content for years, and I've made a successful career out of it, mm -hmm. and that's not right. I think that this is only a step in the right direction, and I know that a lot more needs to be done to even approach um, a life that I would think would be like uh, acceptable. Long story short, future iDubs does not approve of past iDubs, and I, I I think that that is something that should be um, okay. I think iDubs just doesn't like the guy that he was years ago. He's changed as a person, and he's reflecting, and he's thinking like, dang. I wish I could have done things differently. I actually don't feel like what I did was okay. And whether you agree or disagree with that concept, maybe you think what he did was justifiably so. Maybe you're okay with whoever he was, but at the end of the day, like he's not, 
right? And I think he just wants to communicate that that's where his headspace is, is that he doesn't want to be that guy anymore. And I think we should be okay with him wanting to not be somebody that he does not like. Even if you like it, maybe it approves of your values and your morals and you're like, hey, I you did nothing wrong. Continue being the king of the incels. No, he, he doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and it shouldn't be weird for him to be like, I just want to step away from being that person. There's a lot of people on the internet that doesn't like the fact that I dubs doesn't want to be the person that he was. But I also think it also has to do with the fact that, uh, number one, he condemns his fans very often. I, I don't know if he actually has a very uh, strong scope on his community because his community clearly um, does not agree with what he's saying for many reasons. Some people suggest that he hasn't changed, that he's still kind of bigoted or he's still kind of moral grandstanding when it comes to people like Froggy Fresh and the whole drama with Sam Hyde and Creator Clash saying like, hey man, you actually haven't stopped what you're doing. You've just changed targets. There's this picture out there that IDUPS is still kind of the same, but just different. But I want to make very clear that I think it's important to allow people to change. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to give people who think that they are bad the room to escape and the room to grow. Because if you don't give people any reason to be a better person, then they'll just continue being a shitty person. If you don't give anybody any options or any form of redemption, then, then, then what hope is left? You know, like why change and better yourself as a person when nobody's gonna care that you did so? I am running ads on this video and uh, any revenue uh, generated from this video, I'm going to match and donate to an organization that you know would have been particularly affected by the type of rhetoric that I've been spewing on this channel. I dubs that organization is me, Omni. Give me your money, okay? I'm black. <laughs> I've been hurt and offended and appalled for all of these years, and I, I, I want, I want financial compensation in order to make my heart feel better, in order for me to feel good about the the, the past. <laughs> It's interesting because like, I don't know if IDubs is being authentic or not. He seems like he's being authentic, but the majority of the time, the PR route for this situation is to throw money at a group of people in order to kind of say, hey, I'm so sorry. Like just the other day, you know, we had Aiden Ross, you know, basically talking about uh, transgenders people and saying like, uh, kill slash them. And then like a week later, he's out in black neighborhoods passing out $100 bills to the cookouts. So I'm like, hey, look at me. <laughs> I'm a great guy and I support communities, right? Like it's, it's the classic one-two punch where if you have a lot of money and you need to kind of release some of that PR effort that you just give money away. And I'm not saying that what he's not doing isn't going to be helpful or contributing, but it's the usual move. It's, it's nothing new. And again, this isn't the end of what I'm doing. This is just the start. Cool. I don't feel like a lot of this content represents me as a person, uh, at least not anymore. There was a time where it probably perfectly represented me because I was a nasty, apathetic, insecure person. Now, now that I don't feel like it represents me and I want to distance myself from it and keep it from, you know, indoctrinating more people, I'd like to unlist the videos so that people, you know, can access them still for whatever, you know, purposes they might want to do that for. Um, but it's not being proliferated on the website. I, I feel like that hmm. that's the best solution, at least for the time being. And for anyone who liked those videos, I, I you know, I want this video to be uh, an example and a lesson for you. You know, you can like content, but you can also think that it, it's irresponsible and it's hurting other people. So it, just tap into that part of your brain that's saying like, oh, okay, it's like, it's probably not that important that this video stays online because truthfully, uh, I've seen it, I've experienced the content but it's done a lot of damage. We, we can just let it, we can let it go. When I think of the content cops and how it's hurt a lot of people, and I think of the targets of the content cops, like, like Leafy <laughs> or Keemstar <laughs> or Rice Gum, like those guys, they had it coming. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. It's freaking karma, okay? They were out here on the internet spewing hate, spewing terrible negative energy, okay? It's not like you're out here like, you know, targeting like innocent people and you're like, oh, these innocent people have done nothing wrong, I'm hurting them. No. <laughs> You're just giving a lot of these people who were bullies a taste of their own freaking medicine. I honestly believe that the content comps were just very harsh criticism and comedic takes on people who were already doing harsh 
comedic criticisms on everybody else. It was just kind of like in line with that territory. If you existed in that space and you loved that space where everyone was just talking shit to each other, it was just a normal day. But I am okay with the concept of him like unlisting the videos. It's not unavailable. You can go and you can find it on his YouTube videos. I've done it myself and a lot of content creators have unlisted videos where they're like, man, I, I was a different person in the past. And now I just don't like that when people find me or they search me, this is one of the videos that pops up because I don't feel like that represents who I am now. And some people feel like, well, yeah, we have the library. You need to continue to be whoever you are. I don't think that has to be the case. You don't have to associate with a prior version of yourself that you no longer respect or like. And again, I want to make it very clear for those of you on the internet who are iDubs fans who are upset that he's kind of denying his past self is that like, like let this man grow. You might grow one day too into a different person one day. And imagine someone says, no, you cannot. <laughs> the sins of the son or the sins of the father like you must continue being whatever it is you are forever and ever and ever and it's just like well dang like stop trapping people into this identity man if they want to kind of shift uh, allow them to shift i dubs is taking accountability and saying oh, yeah he did some crappy stuff he's not saying that it wasn't crappy and he's like i didn't like it it was crappy and now i just kind of don't want to do it no more and i just don't want it to be like like why are people being so harsh about a man who wants to take accountability and say sorry right <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to everyone that I made content cop videos on. I I still don't like the majority of you, and that's fine, but I can recognize that you did not deserve the hate and harassment that I sent your way. They deserved it. <laughs> I don't care if that makes me a villain or not. They deserved it. I particularly want to apologize to Tana. Tana, I'm sorry. I should have never made that video. I harassed Tana in person and then harassed her online. And that's deplorable behavior. Yeah. It's so stupid. I'm also sorry to all the black viewers and minority groups who had to put up with that video and put up with, you know, the phrases. I, I said either it's all okay or none of it's okay. And that's just so dangerous and stupid. I have made content that I'm proud of over the years. It hasn't been as consistent as maybe I'd like it to have been. But, you know, there is a lot of content that I think had a net positive on the world. And, you know, I'm going to strive to continue on that trend. Uh, but again, I'm not, I'm, I'm absolutely going to continue to make mistakes. But I want the mistakes to be a lot smaller and a lot less serious. I does as I stated before, as a black viewer, the only way that I will forgive you is you give me a sum of money that makes me feel better. Now you go ahead, just DM me, hit me up on Twitter. We follow each other on Twitter, all right? I know you're watching this video. Hit me up, send me a few Gs, and uh, I, I might feel a little bit better. You know, the, the message I might push out to my audience might be, hey guys, <laughs> let's take it easy on all my dubs here, all right? <laughs> you can buy me out, all right? I'm letting you know right now, you can, <laughs> So for the black guy opinion of the video, I, I don't know if I can actually forgive iDubs because I don't really, I never really wanted an apology in the first place. I, I'm not one of those people who are kind of like looking at iDubs and being like, he's a terrible person for black people. And and, and he's entered in a, a huge group of people of incels who are racist and gathered them all together to be in one spot to, to kind of make life more problematic for black people, I, which I guess technically he probably has done. But I, I, I don't want an apology from iDubs on behalf of black people. I appreciate the thought. That's that's very nice, but I don't think it's 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 me a black person or a black viewer that is the target audience. I see iDubs as a, a totem, uh, an icon where people who actually do hate black people or are hateful towards other races and stuff like that kind of just gather in one place like, hey guys, we're here. A bunch of us are all here hating one group of people and I love it. I'm with my fellow brothers. It sounds familiar because it should because it's the KKK. And I'm not saying that's his audience, but <laughs> uh, some of those members were probably uh, fans of his, if you know what I mean. So iDubs, I can't really accept your apology just because because I just feel like, I don't know, I I don't feel like I'm in a place where I, I feel like I need one or I'm owed one. Um, you, you did what you had to do when you had to do it. And now you're kind of having a reflection where you're like, I shouldn't have done that. That wasn't, that was kind of like my bad. And it's just not my place to sit here and be like, I, me, I forgive you. Because I just, um, I don't know. I don't think it impacted me or hurted me as much as you might think. But if you, a fellow black person in the comments or something, feel like this is an apology that you want to accept, Go for it. Do your thing. I also want to give some clarity to the 
post-fight speech that I gave. I mean, it wasn't a speech. It was a, a phrase. I was like, you know, I'm not, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea, <laughs> but I, I really do uh, appreciate the support. And, um, uh, you know, thank you for coming. That was addressing the people over the years that I neglected and I left behind. You know, the people whose feelings I, you know, didn't take into consideration. Those are the people who I was addressing as, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Anyone who thinks that I should be shouting the N-word from the rooftops, I don't want to be your cup of tea. Okay, that's great. I actually don't have any comments on that, just... Okay. Now I want to talk about events and situations that have happened over the past five years of my life that have led me to the place I'm at now. Okay. One year I was at a convention and a bunch of fans were, you know, wanting pictures. And this particular fan came up to me and said, I know you probably don't like transgender people, but can I, you know, get a picture? That smacked me in the face. I was like, Oof. oh, holy shit. Why would you think that? But I mean, it was fairly obvious. I was being cruel, hateful, bigoted, and uh, being very uncaring about people's feelings. That is a very fair assessment to make. I was giving this person bad vibes, and I think I've given a lot of people extremely bad vibes. TLDR, as I said before in the video, uh, Encel goes out and touches grass and realizes that there are actually people in the real world uh, that are affected by the words that he says. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's very easy to sit in your basement and make videos and yell at people and uh, be hateful or be toxic or whatever. And then you go out to the events and you find people who are actually living, breathing humans and you spend time with them and you realize like, wait a minute, maybe just having a conversation or having a talk with some of these people would have like nullified all of that. And I think <laughs> the point here is that it wasn't about understanding. It was about content. Okay. Uh, Idubs made his content in order to create a following because he liked it because he wanted to grow on YouTube, because he wanted the views and the validation. It's the most powerful drug on the freaking internet, is uh, people liking you. But I get it, because I've gone out and I've met fans. I'm a bit of a homebody, but I went to Otakon last year, and um, I met fans, <laughs> people, living, breathing humans with fingers, and there weren't just numbers and, and, and icons hiding behind an anime picture. They'd be like, yo, Omni, hey, just want to let you know, like, keep up the good work. Hey, you, you kind of helped me out during COVID, or, or hey, you, uh, you, you changed my life in a kind of way, or hey, man, just, just keep it up. I, I love what you're doing. I mean... And kind of just feeling like real people telling you real things, it makes you realize like, holy crap, I'm having an impact that actually affects lives. And I think for him, he's starting to realize like, whoa, some of that karma and that energy that I was putting into the world might have been creating a negative impact. And that's not something that he feels that he wants to be a part of. Another event that was very important for me to experience was I went on a boxing podcast I was basically like trying to walk back my uh, Tana content cop. Mm. Uh, you know, I was still very like insecure and uncomfortable with the fact that I made that video. And, uh, but I was still coping. You'll see me struggle in this clip to, you know, say that it was wrong. So I just wanted to uh, let you talk on that, right? Because obviously uh, using the N-word is definitely frowned upon by a lot of people, especially by a non-African-American, but I was just curious. That was a very weird video because I wanted to like criticize her for her like sort of flagrant use of it. I've been pretty flagrant about it too, not in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I thought there was a message to be, to be shared there. And um, I don't think it was particularly... It was okay in criticizing her, but I think it, like, I probably wasn't the person to deliver the message, if that and, makes sense. And, and there was a, a message that I was trying to put out there, and, like, I'm not really the person to put out that message. I don't regret making the video. I think, you know, there's there's uh, bits and pieces to take from it that I think are valuable, uh, but, you know, I probably wouldn't make it these days. I don't disagree with old school 22, uh, 2022 idubs. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sometimes heartbreaking, the worst person you know just made a great point. I'm not a believer that you have to be a specific type of person in order to, to, to make sense, right? <laughs> I don't think making sense is like blocked off because you, you fit a different category. I think if you make a point, you make a point, regardless of kind of where the stance is. Obviously, it can be ironic coming from somebody like iDubs, but that doesn't nullify the point that's being made. It's kind of like, you know, the Spider-Man pointing me. If Spider-Man is pointing at another Spider-Man and he has making a great point that's eventually coming back at him, sure, yeah, but it, it doesn't take away from it. I'm very grateful to those guys and how they uh, broached the subject because, you know, it didn't put me on the defensive. It just made me realize, like, I'm stupid. I'm stupid and I really need to, like, acknowledge these things. Like, like what am I doing? I'm still trying to make excuses for myself and like, you know, why I made that video. It's like, it was a dumb idea. I harassed someone. I was saying slurs and I was trying to justify it all. Mm -hmm. A very big thing that has sort of altered my view on all of this is just the amount of hate and harassment my wife Anissa has received over the years. Mm. Uh, she's had to deal with it from the beginning of our relationship and I have done a horrible job at acknowledging her and her feelings for it. I, a lot of the time I just thought that that was, that was her problem or that was, um, you know, other people's problem. Like, it's not my problem that you're getting hate and harassment. And it's like, no, it absolutely is. You know, that's the culture that I cultivated and I, you know, didn't do anything to change that. You know, over the years it's changed a little bit, but you know, I don't think I've still fully uh, acknowledged how how responsible I am for the amount of harassment that Anissa has had to deal with. Is this what it all boils down to? <laughs> is my man trying to defend his wife? Uh, he sees that his wife is getting hatred from uh, the, the community that he has garnered. And uh, now he feels like... He has to take responsibility to defend his lady. Is this is is this what it's all about? Is it about Anissa? It's like one of those moments in movies where like the bad guy uh, has somebody that they care for and then realizes like whatever he was doing as a villain started spilling off and affecting the people he cared for. And he's like, <laughs> wait a minute. Now that this uh, effect is impacting people that I, I care about, maybe what I've been doing has been wrong the entire time. Which brings me back to apathy. It's, 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 it's interesting that he does boxing, right? Because uh, if you're going to be a person who can throw a punch, you, you also need to be a person who can take the punch as well. iDubbbz probably was that person who could throw out a punch and dish it with the content cops and take it as it came in in spades. But uh, now that he probably has somebody who can't take it <laughs> and is impacting people who are getting punched, uh, maybe he's like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, I don't know if I can be about this life because it's just affecting the people that's around me. This might be my personal opinion, but I feel like a Nisa has a very huge sway on the way that he has chosen to live his life. If iDubbbz was still, you know, just him and solo or didn't have that person to kind of, I don't know if he would actually change as a person. I could be wrong. That's just personal speculation, but iDubbbz has thick skin and I feel like um, if he didn't have a reason to change, then he he, he probably wouldn't have. It, it, it would have still been his way of living. I think people change when they interact with different people, but I could be wrong. Just speculation. And this year I decided to speak more candidly and, and be more open about who I am as a person and to speak on my life a little bit more. Okay. And I did that on Anthony Padilla's podcast. These are the people that I'm attracting. These are the people that I'm entertaining. Mm. Like, I need to reevaluate things. They're relating and enjoying this content for a reason. And that's not maybe the same reason that I'm trying to make. I had a very Wild West mentality when it came to online uh, mm -hmm. behavior. like. People yeah. are going to do what they want to do. People are going to say what they want to say. Um, and I can pretty much do the same because uh, it's the internet. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you have to be a lot more responsible. If you guys are at all interested in how I've arrived here, that video gives, you know, a good bit of context and talks about some of my life a little bit. Maybe this is an unpopular opinion for me, but I feel like the wild, wild west of the YouTubes and the internet, I think it's okay to say like, hey, uh, that existed in that time sphere and now that I look back on it, I don't like it. But you can accept that that's how times were. That people did things uh, 10 years, 15 years ago that are not acceptable 
now and things that you could not be canceled for now. We can continuously go down the road and be like, hey, our past selves from 10, 15, 20 years ago, some of the things we did, completely unacceptable and I denounce it, right? But I think we also have to accept that uh, it was a different environment as well. Uh, we have to accept that there's context in the way that people were acting. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's okay. I'm just saying like when people live in different environments, like even now, things that iDubs is saying or I'm doing or whatever, 10, 15, 20 years ago, there might be something that you can take away from it and say, hey, that wasn't 100% right. I don't think we have to continue to condemn our prior selves for eternity. But again, iDubs was not like a, a normal dude. He was out here doing <laughs> crazy things. So I don't think that 100% applies to him. There is a clip from this interview that's been floating around the internet and it's me calling my fans antisocial and basement dwellers. And I was like, I didn't like, you know, interacting with my fans. I just want to be clear, like, I, that was my realization. I think a lot of people are like, of course that happened. is because you were creating that culture and you were attracting those people. Right. And it's like, yes, I know. <laughs> I know now. I didn't know before. It was my realization upon, you know, meeting more and more fans that I was like, oh, shit, you guys are real people are struggling. It was easy for me to identify them struggling when they were outside of my body. But the antisocial basement dwelling incel that was inside here. Yeah, uh, I, I couldn't acknowledge that. I couldn't recognize that. So I needed the mirror to be held up to me. The abyss. In closing, I want to say that I have always thought that I was an empathetic person because I thought, well, I get angry, I get sad. Of course I got empathy. Seems easy, right? Empathy? I definitely have that. There were moments where like a dog would die in a, in a film and I'd cry. So it's like, of course I have empathy. But I never did. Uh, I think only in these past couple of years have I gained the ability empathy and it, I'm very ashamed to admit that. It sounds, it sounds really pathetic to say at the age of 32, I've acquired empathy, but I have, and I've realized it because I just like can't help myself but uh, like feel for other people's pain and suffering now. I'm still not perfect. I, you know, I, I think that is, uh, you know, my empathy meter's only maybe like a quarter of the way filled up potentially, but it's at least there. And uh, I just want you guys to know that uh, you can unlock ability empathy if you, you know, experience more life. It might take you getting hurt a little bit, but uh, it's worth it. <laughs> my man said you might be able to unlock the ability like it's an RPG code, right? Like, like you progressed to level 32 in your life and you finally unlocked the skill empathy. <laughs> to care about how your actions might make other people feel. Look, I've been joking a lot with you guys in this video and I've been a little bit harsh on iDubs, but I will say that I do appreciate the fact that he's making an effort to, to, to be a better version of himself. What, whether you agree with that version that you think is, that he should be is, is, is acceptable or not, I would prefer to be around people who are open and flexible to changing. The alternative is being around people like, I don't know, Andrew Tate, who believe that they are gods and nothing they can do is wrong and everything that they do is right. I, 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 I don't want to be around people like that. I don't I don't want to be around a group of people who refuse to believe that they've done anything wrong in their life and therefore they stay the same forever. <laughs> Because if I stay the same like how I was when I was 15 or 16, I, I would not be happy with who I am today. Simply put, if somebody wants to pivot and try to be a better person, let's let's encourage it. So thank you for watching, everyone. I do want to create more regular content and... Um, you know, I don't want to just have the next five videos be apologies. So I, I have uploaded a squirrel video on my second channel. If you want to watch that, I guess as one final thing, I just want to thank everyone who's given me the space and the compassion to grow as a person because it's taken longer than it probably should have. I appreciate everyone. And I think most importantly, I appreciate my wife, Anissa. She has been insanely uh, compassionate and helpful and patient in, uh, you know, allowing me to grow over the years and has, has legitimately encouraged me to be a better person and not a better person in just like the, you know, uh, I dubs becoming woke kind of way. She has, she was the one who said that I should try this boxing thing. 
I would have never done that on my own because I was insecure and I was pathetic. I did this and I am so glad I did. Uh, it's been amazing. So Anissa, I love you. You're amazing. Right now you're streaming. Get it, iDubs. You love your wife, okay? We, we get it, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My man's got some of that, that tender woman love, and now his heart has melted. And <laughs> all the incels on the internet are like, God dang it, you fell for the, the evil sorcerer's tricks. You're a man. How dare you fall for a woman's antics where you've now softened the blow? <laughs> There's a lot of uh, womenless men out there, or men who've gotten their heart broken from women, or men just who do not like women in general, who hate <laughs> when men say, hey, I, I like a woman. I like women or <laughs> I have a woman in my life that I love and helps me to grow. Like they hate that concept. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Let's look at some of the top comments on Twitter. Let's see what people had to say. Willie Max said, iDubbbz gains career by making fun of people on the internet. iDubbbz gets made fun of on the internet and then iDubbbz realizes being made fun of on the internet isn't fun. There summed it up for you. Uh, again, I, no, no, I don't think that's the summary <laughs> of the video. Willie Mac, I think, uh, and, and if anything, the, what you're probably missing is the second point. I don't think iDubbbz actually is hurt for him getting made fun of. I think now uh, he's realizing like people like his Anissa. I think that kind of might sum it up. In my opinion, he's starting to realize that people who are that he cares about might be affected by some of the actions that he's done and therefore uh, doesn't like doing it anymore. I think iDubs can take a punch, I, literally, from Creator Clash and everything. I, I think he can take a blow. He can take a joke and he can dish it back, but uh, I don't think that uh, sits well with everyone else in his circle. I actually love this one where Larry says, iDubs talking about his old videos, and it says, the cartoons you are about to see are products of their time. They may depict some of the ethnic and racial prejudices <laughs> that were commonplace in American society. These depictions were wrong then and are wrong today. <laughs> Ackman saying hearing iDubs condemn his old content cop videos is effing wild. Man was one of the few that had the balls to do whatever it took to call out BS on YouTube and now he apologizes for that? I don't get it, man. I, I, I kind of similarly kind of agree to it. I, I do not think all of his content cops were actually bad in nature and the people that he called out definitely deserve the criticism. Okay, I don't know a lot about Tana, but I know about everyone else he was talking about and I was like, yo, my man's was spitting facts, okay? <laughs> Maybe he was uh, bullying them, but I didn't mind. These were bullies bullying each other, right? It was a bunch of bullies bullying each other. I'm okay with that. Wavy Websurf saying, iDubs at 32 years old, finally realized screaming the N-word is bad and expects folks to care slash respect him for coming to this conclusion. <laughs> and then there's me, my white mutuals looking at me after iDubs apologized for the N-word video. It's it's always that situation where like, uh-oh. It reminds me of PewDiePie when he dropped the N-word and then he made an apology video and then white people were kind of like, hmm. So Omni, <laughs> how do you feel about uh, this white man who said the N word? Are you, do you forgive him? <laughs> I dubs. I'm not proud of my past and I want to take accountability for the pain of cause and I hate I've enabled. YouTube racist. This is a video that says I dubs is a loser now. But yeah, my final thoughts on all of this is, hey, good for I dubs for trying to change or whatever. Uh, I, that, that, that's great. I'm, I'm very happy for you, man. I don't have a problem with the fact that iDubbbz is going through some internal reflection and uh, he got support from his wife, Anissa, in order to be a person that he wants to be. However, he will have to deal with the fan base that he created because he's pivoting over to another type of content, which is uh, not being mean and bullying people on the internet. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's weird watching some of the people on Twitter get like really angry at iDubbbz, like being very frustrated at the fact that he kind of, uh, you know, just wants to be a better person. I, That's the one thing that I don't understand. Like, even though he wants to be a better person, it's not making me feel like, oh, I'm so happy or thank God. Like, I'm crying black tears because the white man has decided to stop being racist in a certain way. Like, it, it doesn't affect me like in any kind of direction, like positive or negatively. But I see a lot of people on the internet respond very, very negatively, like upset, angry, enraged that the king of incels is taking a step down or is bending a knee to his wife or is changing. It's like, why are you so angry, bro? Why is this man saying sorry make you so freaking upset? <laughs> I would love to talk to some of these people, some of these people who hate IW, who hate this video. I would love to talk to them and just be like, yo, 
Come on to the show. Let's talk. Why are you so angry that he is making this decision for himself? But yeah, guys, that's the deep dive. Let me know how you guys feel about everything in the comments below. If you made it this far, you're now obligated to drop a comment and let me know what your opinion is, okay? That's, we're going to fight in the comments below, okay? But also, drop a like. And then also, if this is your first video, subscribe. But if it's not your first video and you haven't subscribed, subscribe as well. But yeah, guys, that's the end of the deep dive. Going to be a long video. If you enjoyed it and you want me to do more of it, uh, sure. More of the story. Um... <laughs> <laughs> energy in, energy out. And I think uh, I-Dubs wants to put in some better energy. At least what he thinks is good energy. And, and I think if he goes that route, he, he will find himself in a, a place where he's surrounded around in an environment with people of the same like uh, likeness. So I'm wishing you the best, I-Dubs. If you watch this video, man, you and Anissa, good luck to your future, bro. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy, genuinely happy that uh, you want to bring more positive energy into this world, truly. And I, um, yeah, I think think if that's what your motivation is, you're going to have to shrug off a lot of haters, but uh, eventually you'll be able to do it. Okay, that's it. All right, peace.